In this lab 18 special directories and files, we will view files with special permissions and create hard and soft links. In 18.2, this is about viewing special permissions. In this task, we will find and understand the purpose of special permissions beyond read, write, and execute. Last lab was about read, write, and execute. This is kind of like an add-on, what we can do after we've learned the basics of read, writing, and executing. In 18.2.1, we're given a reminder that using the dash D option with the ls command lists directory information, and combined with the dash L option, it shows ownerships and permissions for the file directories. So the syntax for this is going to be an ls dash LD and then our directory or file name. For our directory, we have a slash temp. This is where we have our temporary files. If we wanted to see this directory through our slash var directory, which is on top of this directory, which is on top of the slash temp directory, we would do ls dash ld slash var slash tmp. Pressing enter here, it's a little bit different. We can see that there are two links to this, and we can see that the date is different as well as the actual directory to get to here. The slash temp and slash var directories are read, write, and execute for everyone. We can see that in the permissions right here. We also have this T attached to the very end instead of a X for our other permissions. And the T, as it says right here, is in the execute column. Again, this is replacing our X. For the other permission, it indicates that this directory has the sticky bit permission set. This special permission means that even though everyone can add files in these directories, only the user that creates a file can delete that file. This is what sticky bit permission is. The root user is not affected by this permission, so that account can delete all files in the directory regardless of ownership because they are root. But sticky bit permission allows others to create a file, but they cannot delete files. In 18.2.2, we are introduced to the setoid command. First, we're starting this off by showing the permissions for our slash etc slash shadow directory. If we enter this here, we can see that the user has read write and the group has the write permission. This is because the slash etc slash shadow file contains encrypted passwords, so it's very sensitive, and only root users or those executing as root user can access this. When a user wants to update their password, they are writing to this. However, they cannot delete their password, so this is perfect for a set user ID command. This permission causes a file to execute as the user that owns the file, instead of the user that is actually running the command. Now we're looking at the set UID in action. So 18.2.3 says that to view permissions of the slash user slash bin password file, we are going to do this, the ls-long, and this will give us information about the slash user slash bin directory. So we have rwsr, and this rwsr means read, write, and set UID as well as execute permissions. If it's a lowercase s, that means we can set UID and still have execute permissions. However, if it's an uppercase s, it only means that we can set the UID and we can't actually execute the permissions. In 18.2.4, we're viewing another directory, which is ls-l slash user slash bin slash wall. And in here, we see that the S is not in the user part of the permissions, but it's in the group part. This usually means that the file has a set GID permission set. So it executes as the group that owns the file instead of the group user running the command. Thus, the wall command is able to write to all terminals as it executes as the TTY group. This is very similar to the set UID permission. However, instead of running as the user owner of the program, it runs as the group owner of the command. The only real difference is the U and the G part. In 18.3, we are learning about hard and soft links. In this task, we will create and use hard and soft links. In 18.3.2, we are going to create a file named source containing the text data by using redirection. This is from a previous lab where we basically use echo and then we have some command or text in here. We'll have data and then we are going to send this somewhere. The somewhere we are sending it to is source. Next, in 18.3.3, we are introduced to the dash i option with the ls command that prints the index number of the file. View the details and in node information of the source file. We need a dash l too, just to long list it. So we're going to have ls for list, dash l for long, and then the i for the i node information. 
we're going to have our file name here, which is source, and then we can see the inode number as well as everything else with it. Our inode number is this, which is a lot bigger than what we're given in the example up here. But we also should note that we have a link of just one. Inodes are used to keep track of information about a file. A directory entry associates an inode with a file name. Creating a hard link creates another directory entry associated with an existing node and will increase the link count number. So every time a new hard link is made, this account number will increase. Hard links allow you to use multiple names to refer to the same exact file. If any one of these names is removed, and all the files will stay existent as long as there are at least one inode with this information. These names can even be used to create additional links. All of these names are considered equivalent as they all refer to the existing node. There is something we should note though, and that's we cannot create hard links to directories. Also, a hard link to a file must exist within the same file system, also known as a partition, as the file that it links to. So hard links, although very useful, have some boundaries with it. In 18.3.4, we're going to create a hard link. The syntax for this is an ln, and then our target, then the link name. So we're going to have a ln, our target, which is the source file that we have right here, and then we want our link name. Our link name, we'll just call it hard link. So now we are creating the hard link with the ln, and we can list this by doing ls-li, so list long, as well as the node with it, the inode, and then we're gonna have our source hard link. Pressing enter here, we can see the hard link information, and we can also see the source information. We can see that this is basically the same exact information because our ln created a new hard link of our source, and it's just called hard link here. So we have our hard link, that's exactly the same. We note that it's exactly the same inode, and now we have two links instead of the one we had up here, and that's because hard linked is linked to source. In 18.3.5, we're going to yet again make another hard link to our source file. So we're going to do ln, so this makes the hard link, and then what our target is, and our target this time instead of source, we'll just do hard link. So we'll have hard link, and then we'll call it hard link to, and press enter. If we do ls-li for list long with our inode, we'll do hard link, hard link to, and our source. So we're going to list all of these, basically. And if we do this, we can see that I suck at spelling, and if I fix the spelling error and press enter here, we are going to compare this up here to this down here now. So I'm going to highlight this so it's easier to read. Well, we can see first off that our inodes for each of them are the same, even though we created a new hard link. Our link counter went up by one, and that's because we now have this hard link that points to this hard link. We have hard link two that points to hard link, which points to the source. Therefore, we have three links to access this. Now we're going to use the remove command to remove files. Basically, we are going to remove some of the links. We'll use rm and then any name we want, this example using hard link two, so we're going to remove hard link two. After we do this, we can list long with our inode option and do source hard link, and we can see that we only have two links to this instead of three, and that's because we just remove one. We're going to remove our next hard link, so if we do rm hard link, and then list li our source, we can see that we only have one link to this instead of our two or instead of this three up here. And that's because we've now removed both links to our source. In 18.3.8, we are introduced to the symbolic, also known as the soft link. Symbolic links do not increase the link count of files with which they are linked. So the link counter will just stay the same. Only hard links will increase the link counter. Symbolic links have their own inode and type of file. Instead of linking and sharing an inode, they link to a specific file name. Unlike hard links, soft links can be linked to directories and can cross devices and partitions to their targets. Before we mentioned that hard links have certain boundaries, well, soft links can overcome the boundaries that hard links have. This does not mean that soft links also don't have boundaries, however, they compensate with what they can do. Whatever hard links can't do, usually a soft link can do. Whatever soft link can't do, hard link can do. We're going to use the dash esh option for the ln command. And this creates our symbolic link instead of a hard link. Without the dash s, we will be creating a hard link instead. So we are going to create a soft link to our source. We'll do ln 
dash s for soft link and then the source because this is our target and then our new name which is soft link then we're going to list this by doing ls dash li to list the inode and then our targets which is source and soft link we want to list both of these if press enter here we can see that this soft link actually points to our source and we can also see that there is only one link for both of these lastly we note that they have different inodes the permission for our soft link is actually ill relevant. That's probably what the L means, but basically the permissions are determined by the target file. So the permissions for our soft link are determined by the source here. In 18.3.9, we are gonna create a symbolic link to the slash proc directory and then display the link. So to create a soft link, we have the LN with the dash esh option and then our target, which is slash proc and then the name of our new soft link, which is cross dir. We then list this with the ls-l cross dir, and we can see that this is what it looks like. If we wanted to include the inode, we would just tack this on right here, and we can see that we get the inode with it. That is it for this lab. This lab was pretty short, so it might be interesting to check out the link down below with notes to this chapter, as well as all the other labs that we've done.